Hello and welcome back to the Popcorn for Dinner podcast. And welcome to our weekly discussion on the incredible second season of HBO's Industry. And joining me today to dissect another very good episode of Industry. Unfortunately, he's neither Mickey Down nor Conrad K, but he'll just have to do it. Ayo in them. Ayo, how are you doing today? That's really hurtful that he said it was unfortunate. I feel like I'm worthy trusting myself. Wait, what wait, what do you think though? Do you think like you're like should I be happy that you're neither Mickey nor Conrad? What do you mean? You said it was unfortunate. Yeah, it's unfortunate that you're, that you're neither of them. Like, I'm not going to be happy about the fact that you're... Why? Why are you because happy I, about that? Because you'd I would rather, rather they were on... You'd rather yeah, do the podcast with them. Wow. I mean, wow, is this well, up I for wouldn't. debate? <laughs> I wouldn't rather do it. I'd rather do one with that's you. Not, that's not true. Maybe we finished that last week's episode. You were like, you know what? That's the best That's the best I've ever felt on this podcast. I wish we could, I could speak with Mickey and Conrad every week. Those were your words. I mean, I didn't say best I've ever felt on this podcast, but I do wish I could speak with them every week because they're really nice. Yeah, exactly. So I, I wish I could speak with them every week too. It's unfortunate that you, place you are me. not. Mm. No, it's unfortunate that you're not them, mm-mm, but it's mm-mm, fortunate mm-mm. that you're every you are not everyone else. You know, does what? that make it's sense? Fine. It's fine. You come in at a strong second, strong second, I'm... very strong second. It's okay. I don't have to be number one in your life, Banky. Oh no, no, you're number one in my life. But when it comes to this podcast and industry, you're, you're a strong second. I don't know, I don't know what to say to you. I, I, you said, I you can't said all def- that needs to be said. Yeah, and I'm not I'm not like angry about it. I'm not I don't feel the need to defend myself. I'm I'm very uh, staunch in my beliefs on this particular issue. Cool. <laughs> okay. Um speaking of, if you're listening to this episode and I presume that you know that we spoke with the creators of industry last week for episode five uh mickey down and conrad k we spoke they were very very generous with their time very very thoughtful about the answers you can tell that they're really giving a lot of thought to these characters this story and we spoke about their thinking in terms of crafting this season season two and also episode five itself um knowing there's a, a big swing and also just how we think that swing came out so if for some reason maybe you missed that on the feed, please go back and check that out. It's a really, really good interview. Short as well. Um, yeah, but what else is going on on the feed? Two friends of the pod, Ebube and Fami, are currently discussing House of the Dragon. So, you know, if you're watching that new Game of Thrones show and you're enjoying it so far, please check that out. They are two readers of the book. So obviously they have good backstory, good knowledge of the law. I'm not a reader of the book, so trust me, I can edit out what anything that may that may be a spoiler. So please check that out as well. Um, I think the next episode will be out tomorrow. Also, dealing with the whole fantasy thing, a couple of other friends are digesting the new Lord of the Rings show, Rings of Power. So please check that out. We aim to have those episodes out every Saturday, the day after the episodes drop on Amazon Prime. So they as well are big talking heads, so they'll be discussing rings of power weekly um so yeah it's like we're well, full on in the fantasy bag over here on, fan- uh, on popcorn for dinner so please check that out um hey i know you're like i know you're a thrones guy if only from the show are you are you a lot of the rings guy no do you know yeah, I, didn't, I, I didn't think i've think watched so. all three movies but like not not in a way that stuck with me the same way i know like i i know i've watched like Sound of Music, but I don't remember ever watching Sound of Music. It's the same way I've watched Lord of the Rings. Oh, okay. So it's not like you can't have a discussion about Lord of the Rings. No, I cannot. Mm-mm. Are you going to watch the show? We'll see. When does it come out? Uh, second. So by the time this episode is coming out, the first episode will be out. Nice. So, um, yeah, I'm like, that's my that's one of my cultural blind spots. I wasn't really a fantasy guy for so long. Like, I don't one know if I'm a fantasy guy right now. I don't think I'm a fantasy guy, actually. I think Game of Thrones just, was just, like, an outlier. Um, so, like, yeah, I haven't watched Lord of the Rings. I haven't watched, like, The Hobbits, all those movies. So, like, that's my cultural blind spot. So I had to outsource that to... You didn't watch The Hobbit? Didn't watch... Wait, so wait, did you watch The Hobbit? Yeah. So you've watched all six movies, not three? Oh, yeah, I think I've watched all six. <laughs> oh, yeah, you could... When you said three, I think you had to watch a lot of the Rings movies then. Oh no, I've watched those three, but I've also watched the other movies. 
Oh, okay. Well, yeah. So you watch all six. You watch all the movies that have come out in the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Just... Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, then yeah. That's I, I didn't watch Hobbit. I didn't watch Lord of the Rings. So I like know nothing about the Tolkien. So it's gonna be so weird, like editing those podcasts because I'm just gonna be like, okay, I guess this should stay, this should go. I don't know, like, <laughs> uh, but yeah. So Priscilla and Cheesy are gonna be covering that. Abby and Fami are covering House of the Dragon. So please check that, out. check those out, those episodes out. Um, what else? Yeah, please follow us whatever platform you're listening on. If you're someone who just maybe you first heard of a podcast when Mickey and Conrad were on, thank you for coming back. Please follow us if you're listening on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever. Please rate and review if you're listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. That really, really helps us like get out there and get recommended. Um, yeah, and also please follow us on our social media pages. It's um, popcorn underscore dinner on Twitter, popcorn for dinner underscore pod on Instagram, and just popcorn for dinner pod or on TikTok. So yeah, and also subscribe to our YouTube channels, please, and like and share those videos. But yeah, let's let's talk about industry. Let's talk are about you, industry. Are you done? Are you done whoring yourself? It's out? it's a lot, isn't it? I, I do it every week, and I never get like, I never get used to it. Speaking of whoring yourself, you never get used to whoring. Yeah, no, no matter how often I do it, it just it just never feels natural. It doesn't feel like second like nature to me. <laughs> I always speaking of TikTok, you've had two good TikToks, thank you. What, so what do you mean by good? As in good in content or good in numbers? One good in content, one good in numbers. <laughs> thank you thank you as opposed to, well that's okay thank you <laughs> i'm proud of you actually using the platform the way it's meant to be used oh shout out shout out to ibuka ibuka is one of the resident gen z so him and i try to i i speak and then he gen z's gen z fires it i don't know uh anyways but yeah shout out to ibuka um <laughs> just as a content which one is the good one in content oh, i'm gonna leave that up to you bro <laughs> what do you think is a good one I just I think both content is good, but that's fine. Uh, industry, industry, season two, episode six, mm. written by Joseph Charlton and directed once again by the returning Caleb Femi. Uh, Ayo, what happened in this episode, and how do you feel about it, bro? So much happened. <laughs> so much so happened. many things happened in this episode. It's ridiculous. I'm not even clear on some of the things that happened, but oh, a lot yeah. happened. Yeah, yeah, of course. So. There's basically three storylines running through this episode. So Mm -hmm. we can hit them character by character. The first Mm -hmm. one is Harper. Or I guess the main story is Harper's story. So she's, you know, watching The Price of Fast Aid um, following episode four, where she tells Jesse to short it, uh, you know, in direct opposition to what DVD wants. Mm -hmm. Uh, To her surprise, the stock price keeps rising. And it's because the retail investors have clumped together because um, they want to save it a la GameStop stroke AMC. It's a GameStop uh, story, boys. It is a GameStop story. <laughs> uh, and, you know, hijinks and Sue, Harper panics and she tries to save her client and her reputation. Uh, on the other side, um, Yasmin is finally leaving her desk. It's mm-hmm. six episodes. She's finally <laughs> leaving. And her and Celeste finally culminate all the tension that have been building. And Again, she deals six with, episodes. yeah, it's been six episodes of build up, and then she deals with the fallout of both of those things. Uh, mm-hmm. I think, and finally, Gus, ah, Gus, oh, Gus, oh boy, Gus, Gus ruminates over his promotion opportunity, and he does that with the help of his sister. Mm-hmm. Uh, so those are those are the three things that happened in this episode. I think we should probably first of all let's get our general thoughts, and then we mm-hmm. can attack each story and like hit the beats of each of those stories. Yeah, yeah, that was that was the plan. When I texted you, I think I was watching the episode. I texted you, I gave you to like do the plot. I gave you the homework, quote unquote. I was part of me was hoping that you would go a lot more. Like I was trying to punish you in a sense. Like you say, you say, this is what happened. And this is, this is the, this is the financial term. And this is what this means. I was like, I was like well, we obviously, can do that um, when we dive into no, it. I mean, you can, I don't, I have no idea what it means. So you can, um, I'll say this though. I'm not, yeah, we're definitely going to go character by character. I'll say this. My, my biggest, well, first of all, no, what, what did you think of the episode? Just like, did you like it? Your biggest takeaway, general takeaway. Thank something you. Like that. I love this episode. This is the second or the third time I've shouted this season. My sister is staying with me and she ran into the room when I screamed. <laughs> she was like, what happened? Because I shouted, fuck! Then, fuck! <laughs> but, 
Okay, I think we, we'll get to the we'll get to the what I think is where you shouted, but I don't know if, if my reaction was even fucked. Like I don't know if I was like angry when that happened, but like anyway. I so my angry, big... I'm like someone is fucked, man. Oh, oh, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. Do you know my my biggest takeaway is a lot more macro, and my biggest okay. takeaway this season is that I'm a bit annoyed as to when this episode is airing, because hey, yo, this is such a good season of TV that we're watching. Mm. Like this is this should be like an award season, like just like let me not say win or whatever, because there are obviously some great shows on TV, but like an award season, like all round contender. And contender. I'm a bit worried if by the time the nominations for next Emmys are coming out, if it, if it will be too far out of people's memory. Because I just imagine you watching this episode thinking, "Fuck, man, this Emmy vote is not going to vote for this stuff because it's going to be too far away." That is me because I'm thinking. <laughs> We are seeing performances that we nominated that we're seeing right. And I'm not just saying this because obviously Mickey and Conrad were on last week. That, that's part of the reason because now we look, guys, I'm sorry, but now we're we're Mickey and I am a Mickey and Conrad chill now. I can't tell you if I'll be <laughs> completely unbiased, but anyway. No, but I'm not saying that. I'm just like, I was like, you know what? And we had this discussion, didn't we? Like in the previous episode, we're like we we like industry a lot, season one, mm-hmm. but we weren't sure if it was gonna take that next step into being the like, elevation, yeah. Yeah, the kind it. the kind of I don't know the best way to put it, but like it's in kind of what the, Mickey and Conrad said in how like they veered more into traditional storytelling structures to exactly. kind of make the and we're like we don't know if the, that is the show it's going to be like it might just be a bit messy but intentionally messy, right? But mm. now it's kept all those charms from season one and it's just like telling a great story. And I was like, I'm just like, oh my god, I wish this was going to be in Emmy voters' minds this time next year. Or because I was like, this is so good. I was like. Anyway, I hope, but, I hope it, it has enough steam to carry it on. I think HB hopefully the, can like yeah yeah because I think the reaction has been insane. Like mm-hmm. I don't think critically definitely yeah. yeah the critical reaction for this season. I don't think there's many things that have reached the level of acclaim I've seen this season of industry hitting. Yeah. So hopefully that stays long in the mind, and that might also be you know at the at the risk of turning is this discussion into like an awards season discussion but it might end up having a similar effect on their prospects that white lotus had in terms of airing a bit early and people just remember loving it loving it and Fair. then and like, then. just having that at the back of their mind throughout but i don't this even know i mean though. i hope i don't know if that many industry people are watching right i think it's one of those things that maybe it would be like I mean, maybe actually, maybe you're right. Me coming out early is a good thing because then it's a whole year we need to be. get on there's, board. I mean, and just there's like, nothing else for people yeah. to compare it to right now, apart from you know House of Dragon. I don't think there's there's nothing else that's airing right now. Yeah, yeah, that's actually that, yeah, that's actually that's a one benefit I was thinking about. Like, yeah, there is no apart from House of Dragon and all the Rings of Fantasy shows. There is no like it's not as if it's competing with another HBO show or yeah. like Severance or whatever at this time. So that's yeah. yeah anyway, my, that was just my I think it was just like I was like. <laughs> I need people to give this show some love because this is ridiculous what they are doing. Um, okay, so a little, some terms I just want to put out the explanations for in case you watched this episode and you, you didn't know what they meant and you forgot to go research. So bullish is a mm-hmm. belief or an indicator that prices will rise. Mm-hmm. Bearish is a belief or an indicator that prices will fall. And a rally, as I said, a couple times in this episode is a short-term and often sharp upward move in prices when they were like the retail investors were rallying. So in case maybe you didn't know what those means and you're too lazy to set yourself. Um, yeah, and I just love the fact that they were doing GameStop like from the perspective of, of like the rich people who, who were being fucked by quote-unquote democracy. <laughs> um, okay, Harper. How, how do you want to start about Harper? Do you want to start about, let's start about the Harper, the character. Let's right? start, let's start with, with the beginning. Let's start with yeah. the beginning mm-hmm. because I think, I think we can even go plot-wise with Harper, the character. Um, mm-hmm. I feel like after the the fallout of last the last episode, Harper has just her walls are at an all time high mm-hmm. and at an all time strength. So all she's trying to do now is look out for herself. I think maybe she's she's taking the words that her brother said in the last episode of her being selfish and a narcissist, and she's mm-hmm. wearing that as an armor. Mm-hmm. Now she's saying, okay, if if the person that I probably love the most in the world thinks this of me, let me just be that. Let me look out for myself and no one else. And I think Mm -hmm. that, you know, that's my reading of, uh, you know, the performance and the character in this episode. And I think that really is what drives a lot of her actions in this, in this episode. I love, I love the fact that you brought that up actually. 
Uh, we should mention just quickly is that um, after an incredible scene, DVD tells Harper that they've made a decision that London is going to subsume um, New York and he's earmarked Harper to move to the New York desk, mm-hmm. which God knows what that means for our boy Robert, but that's for a different episode. Um, <laughs> but I love the fact that you brought up um, episodes, last episode and Berlin and all that because I have this note, which to be fair, I wrote this note at 3 a.m. I woke up in the middle of the night and I wrote down this note. So so it may or may not make sense. This is this is how much industry is played on my mind. <laughs> I woke up on a but I was thinking, I was like, do we think and I think you kind of partly answered this question, um, but does pre Harper does pre Berlin Harper do what Harper did in this episode? Because in a way, it kind of feels like what pre-Berlin Harper would do. I still feel like she could do these things even if she didn't have the experience in, in Berlin. But, and this might be me trying to like look for the better nature of Harper, but I feel like mm-hmm. pre-Berlin Harper may have responded to DVD when he said, okay, look, now is the time. Tell me the truth. Yeah. Do, do you get and what I mean? I think, I think that's exactly, that was exactly the, the same moment I picked out. I was like, okay. Oh, okay. I think pre-Berlin Harper would have probably asked for help at that point and said okay maybe maybe not even saying like her full story on like how she was the one that told but she would have yeah she would have tried to make a story in which she got some help yeah not just like double down yeah Yeah, that was that was my thing because in terms of the business wise i can see pre-berlin harper always doing this but in terms of like yeah that point where dvd basically opens it like uh, yeah okay that was that was my thing so i guess i wasn't dumb at 3 a.m and obviously I don't think because of how big the fuck up is, I don't think you can go through this without thinking about what Eric said in in season one, right? When it's like there are two times to tell me when when there's a problem, when you really when you fucked up, when you fix it. And it's like I think that was DVD giving her the opportunity. Okay, this is the time to tell me there's a problem. After now, there is you can't do it anymore. Um I, I was so happy when it turned out that Danny knew something was up because I was like, Danny's not a fool. Yeah. Danny is Danny's not, not really. he can't yeah, he yeah. can't see the chemistry that that is going on. And as you mentioned, obviously, um, let me never try and embarrass myself on using the correct terms. But the pro- the idea that Harper gave Blue is clearly in downfall because the the Reddit virgins are uh, trying to rally this this stock. Mm-hmm. And do you do which you know I think, why it's not good? Well, I know that. Okay, I've watched the big shorts in a way that I can understand what a short in a stock means, okay. right? I know that much, and I know that they are like, look, Bloom seems to believe that his personal attack, which could be fair because he was invested in, in GameStop as well. But the um, Reddit incels are like, look, big Wall Street are shorting this this particular stock fast mm-hmm. aid. Let's obviously try and increase the price. This coincides with the fact that Amazon CTO has Amazon guy has been on a CTO, meaning that should obviously increase the price um, normally. So like mm. the Reddit Reddit incels are really trying to improve the price. Meanwhile, Bloom and I guess other people that are invested in Fast are trying to hold the line essentially. Or I think his mates are actually selling out because they're like, this is fuck. We can't. We don't want to lose more money. Yeah. So they, I, I, guess I mean, so so that 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 scene was interesting because I think I think it did to well one thing in particular. You said that Bloom. Bloom's um, belief that it could be personal could be mm-hmm. founded. I think I think it's unfounded, and I think it's because of who Bloom is that he thinks it's like a personal attack. Mm. I think at that level of you know privilege and wealth, everything that mm-hmm. doesn't go exactly your way feels personal. So yeah, Harper not picking up his phone calls feels like a personal affront to him. When you know, as he says. Life is happening to everyone. Everyone has life. Like, yeah, you don't. That that should never. That shouldn't be a something that you read as a personal affront. And I think him thinking that uh, you know the Reddit guys are coming for him is also just like his narcissism. It's not. Yeah. Like, yeah. I doubt. Yeah, I doubt. Like they're red. They're subreddits about let, let's let's target Jesse Bloom. Yeah. Jesse Bloom. No, I yeah. don't think so. Um, but yeah. So I think. So first of all, I want to talk about the title card because, wow. This is your Great favorite. Uh, I love it. I love it. It's, it was so good in this episode, and the music when the scene comes. Look, I was thinking about this. Like the way they shot that beginning scene with Harper watching the stock price of um, Fast Day go up initially, mm-hmm. like in mm-hmm. the night, mm-hmm. was reminiscent of how they've ended a bunch of episodes 
like that's usually the climax of the episode right mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. the music and like just the tension that's already there and they just start the episode off like that and i was like wow it's gonna be a great one i already knew just from that point um and then the next thing that harper does is uh you know call people try and get some information and then eventually mm -hmm. she finds out that it's because of um wall street bets mm -hmm. uh, then they have this interaction uh harper danny and blue jesse and then she goes to speak to danny and then danny tells her like you already mentioned that she's going to be beamed up to the mothership in my head i'm like well, danny why are you doing that that just seems a bit naive like why would you tell her that now but i think it was all part of him trying to extend the olive branch to be like look i yeah. understand that bloom is your client and you think this is all on you but it, it isn't like we want to take care of you as well so why would you th why did you think it was naive I don't know. I think Eric has scarred me, man, because I don't. I don't think Eric tells her. I don't think Eric tells her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, not yeah, probably. Yeah, probably not. But like, yeah. I mean, I, and then Danny was just like, "Look, whatever is going on, a personal is professional. This is like we can't put that till after work. In terms of professional, like this is this is the truth." And I, I saw it the same way. I was like, "Look, I'm telling you this much to know that like it's not do or die. You basically are. On, you basically have a free ticket." So all you need to do is not fuck up anymore. Just tell me what it is and then we can solve it together. Like you're, you're going to New York, that's fine. Also, we don't have time to get into this, but like her reaction to that was not good. Yeah, that she makes was sense. excited. She yeah, was I don't know. Like, if, <laughs> I don't know if like maybe she just doesn't like America, but she was just like, I don't want to go to New York, which was like, yeah. So I don't, I, we can get to that maybe next week. Maybe but, she felt like she lost or like London losing was her, like personally losing as well. I don't know. Which is finds out that people are actually not going. People are going to get fired. Like, <laughs> people are actually going to lose more. Um, but I guess that leads us to when the the stock, well, obviously skipping a few things, but you guys were the episode, so that's fine. The stock starts to go up. Why are you your listeners? <laughs> no, I'm not. I love that. I love that. Um, <laughs> the, stock, the stock starts to go up. And I found this, I was like, why is Harper so impulsive? The stock starts Wait, to go up go like... Or, up. or let's use uh, up in the sense that it goes in their favor. I I I can't keep track of what is up or what is down. The stock price was falling. Okay, and she speaks to Rishi, and Rishi says, "Yes, it looks like it is falling." Yeah. Um, okay, generally. falling. Yeah, so falling. Yeah, because it was falling, and then yes. that this was a good thing for them. Yes. Oh, uh, so this is where I'm really going to need you because in terms of like the numbers, Rishi was throwing, and I was like, "What are those numbers?" <laughs> I wasn't, to be honest, I wasn't sure. <laughs> okay, let's just play with anyway. But like, but like, what happens in that scene was, yeah. um, or that, no, but, you know, the whole interaction. Yeah, but before that, I was looking like, it just felt very impulsive to me. And I, I guess it's back to like what you said, like, she's like, look, I mean, I think uh, Mickey, and, Mickey and Conrad mentioned it last week, like, work is going to be all she does now, right? She's so like, she has to perform at work. Mm. But the stuff starts to go down for like two seconds and she's on the phone to Bloom. And I'm just like, if it was me, I would wait. I would, I would, I would like really want to be sure first that everything is all right before I come up with this plan that could also backfire. <laughs> she's just like, she's on the she phone asked to Rishi. <laughs> yeah, but and it's a good thing because we want that in real time. It's not like there's no cut. There's no like five minutes later. It's like it, it's literally two minutes. It's like let me call Blue and tell him about this plan. And obviously, they okay. Explain what their plan is as best as you can. So what it seems to me like is happening is, so the stock is going down, which means they're probably a good time for um, them to sell yes. uh, all the shares that they have. But He won't lose as much as he would have yeah. lost five minutes yeah, before. Yeah. Well, I guess. Well, he wouldn't have to lost sell, as much as... Like to, well, to reverse his short position, basically. That's what, that was what he needed yeah, to do. Yeah, right? mm -hmm. um, So, yeah, it seems like a good time. And then he's... Well, Harper gets on the phone with him and they come up with this plan to basically re deceive Rishi, mm -hmm. um, to trick him into thinking that they were they wanted to buy um, buy more stock at that level. And mm -hmm. Rishi was meant to believe that that was what, what they wanted to do because you would need to buy some sh um, stock to if you wanted to stomp out of your position on, at the short, right? Are you following? Yeah. Yeah, but it was all a ruse. They just wanted to sell. <laughs> so, um, you know, we have that incredible scene with the hands. So wait, sorry, sell in terms of like selling their all their stock. Yeah, yeah. 
No, but he still had stock though, because he said at the end that he's going to sell through Goldman at the end. Yeah. Yeah, but not all. I think he sold some, not all. But like, if we're selling, how does that make make money for him and screw Rishi? Because Rishi Rishi thought he wanted to buy, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Rishi set a price that would have been favorable for Rishi if someone was buying something for him. Yes, but but he was selling at that price. He was selling on that price. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, and then the whole yours, and then, and then this thing with the hand, which I'm just like, I mean, look, we're having all this thing about we don't understand the, the jargon, but I don't care. It doesn't because, matter like, what the jargon it is. Does, the, like, the while intent he, was so clear. We're only doing this because it's a podcast. Like, honestly, it changes nothing for me in terms of, like, the sh- understanding the show and enjoying the show. Because, like, once you see that hand thing, I've never seen it before on this show. I don't know what the hand thing is. I haven't worked Wall Street. But, like, I'm like, this is incredible. This is beautiful. I honestly thought, and back to what you said about how it felt like the like the beginning felt like the end. I honestly thought it was like last five minutes. And I looked at what I was like, oh shit, there's still 20 minutes left. <laughs> I was like, there is still more to happen. Um, yeah, and is this, was this the point where you shouted? Yeah, no, that was not what I shouted. Because, oh, wow. I mean, they were cooking up the plan. So I was oh, like, it wasn't this point you shouted. It was yeah, it five was minutes later. later. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. So they cook up the plan, they execute the plan, and it looks Beautiful. like it works because mm. the stock price begins to drop dramatically. Mm. Um, as that's happening, DVD is losing his mind because he's like, why have you just fucked us, first of all? And why are you lying about it? Because I was on the call. I was patched into the line. I heard you and... Did you know who um, was patched in? I didn't know. I felt like he was. I felt like... DVD is the king of being on the phone. <laughs> that's also phone. true. But I had a feeling. I was surprised when he said he was patched in. I felt like he was because from the headset. Bro, from no, I was spun, man, because... So he was patched in and he mm-hmm. like basically heard them trying to deceive. And Rishi's like, why didn't she say something? It's like, I wanted to know who she was. <laughs> Rishi's just there, <laughs> upset. Like, because... That doesn't help me. Now that you know who she was, how does that help me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Rishi's upset because now he's basically bought a bunch of shares that mm. um, the prices seem to be dropping instantly or, you know, by the moment. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so DVD is screaming to Harper that she needs to get out get off the trading floor. Uh, Ew, but she's... that's scream. That, oh, that, that, man. That scream. See, so well acted. So well acted. Here's the thing. You guys also, know, like... I thought he was Drake in that moment. Again. <laughs> Look, you guys Drake know, relaxed. I saw someone as... You guys have listened to this podcast more than five times. You know, I love actors. I, like, I studied acting, all that stuff. Like, like that's the thing that you can't, like... That's acting. I don't know how to put it. That, that's not just like reciting a line. Like the way he, he says that is like his frustration. He's trying to keep quiet, but he, he can't yeah, shout out what. Because he it's shouted just like, it, but then he just, kept himself quiet. Oh, man. I was just like, it was oh so well God. done. I was like, was oh so my well God, what is going on here? Um, yeah, okay, sorry. I cut you off. Continue. Uh, so yeah, so he, he screams sorry. that. And mm-hmm. Harper is ignoring him because mm-hmm. she's watching the prices, like the price drop. And she's she has this little satisfied look on her face. And then the stock price begins to rally, which is when I screamed fuck. <laughs> That's when I screamed fuck. Do you want to know what I did here? At this point, I'm not even supporting Harper because like, I can't support you. you you've, I can't really support you in this situation. But do you want to know what happened? Hey, you worked on Cut Gems now. Yeah. I went full on end of a Cut Gems. I'm not going to support on, on Cut Gems for anyone that hasn't watched it. But the way I watched the last 15 years was how I watched this scene with my hands on my head. <laughs> I'm not exaggerating. I'm not like genuinely my hands were on my head. I was like, I was like, wow, what is going on? What is happening? And let's just pause here. Let's pause here because mm-hmm. you and I have spoken a lot about the needle, needle drops on, on this on this season and just the way they've used music incredibly. Mm. We need to just shout out Nathan McKay, who's the composer. Because I don't think we've spoken about the score particularly. Yeah, I was going to actually have a note for that. The this score in this, in this episode. Mm. Oh my God. Oh my god, like, like wherever you are, Nathan McKay, take a lot of flowers. Because that moment that, that the stock starts going up, I was my eyes could have been closed and I'd have known what was going on. I was like, <laughs> oh my god. I was like, this is so good. Like, oh yeah, yeah, but yeah, and amazing. That's the amazing. moment I'm like, I'm like, oh, this is the end of the episode. We'll start, we'll continue from next week. And they're like, oh no, no, there's still 20 minutes left. There's still <laughs> a lot of stuff to happen. Um yeah, just like I also while we're on this detour, 
I want to talk about Mihala if that's possible. If like unless you have notes on that particular scene before we before we no, move on. Um I don't know if we've again I don't know if we've spoken about her particularly in terms of like her performance, but something that really struck me watching this show the first time was and obviously shout out to Kayla Femi as well, the director, was how many kind of medium and close up shots of Harper he uses this episode. And mm-hmm. I think, like, obviously, like, from that first scene, a lot of them are, like, between monitors. A lot mm-hmm. of them are, like, through windows. Like, she's... Mihala is holding the screen for most of this episode. Just just her. Just her face. Not, like, she, not... Nobody else in the back. I'm just, like, that's just... That's the type of thing that only a star can do. I don't know how to explain it, but, like, it's just where, you know, oh, that, that person's a great actress. That person's a star. Like, that scene between Bloom and, and Danny, that first scene, the anxiety on her face, it's, like... Mm. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it, but like use the word palpable. Like you can just see, like she she doesn't know if like Bloom is about to say like the truth, like just the all truth to Danny. Like she's just yeah, and she's if back to the awards thing. Obviously, maybe the obvious episode to submit to be like last week because that's the big show we won. But I was like, I was like, Mihala is doing incredible. Like this is the one that you're like, this is she's she's the main character of this show, isn't she? Like she's mm. carrying this entire show. Every scene is just like her face, like some close ups. It's difficult to, to hold a close up like that and like convey all the things she needs to convey. And then obviously that scene that Mickey and Conrad referenced from last week when when Eric tells her about how about speaking to people, you can just see her face. She actually looked disgusted. <laughs> just like what's going on? And also just uh, just speaking about Harper as well. I keep forgetting to bring this up for the last five or six weeks, but like her costume in this season. I, I'm not the right person to talk about it because I can't give you the right adjectives to describe it, but she just looks great. Like, she looks like new money and it suits her. Like, like she looks <laughs> different from how she looks in season one. Fair. I love, I love what she's wearing. I don't like, shout out to the costume designer. I just love how, what she's wearing this season. Um, yeah, and I think, obviously, that leads us to that fox or that fox and then she has to leave the desk because, because, um, Dan is like, get off my desk. Uh, and of he has blue- essentially fired her at that point. Yeah, yeah. And then this leads us to her talking to Bloom. Uh, mm. Quick recap, she kind of pitches to Bloom, tell me if I'm wrong, but he should use his speech at the Bloomberg conference or Bloomberg investment conference or whatever to kind of shit talk his um, the stock, right? So that his short makes yeah. money. So like, if everybody's yeah. like, oh, I have to sell um, fast aid and his short makes money. But at the same time, he gets a call from 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 Leo, and he, I just love the fact that that Bloom has his priorities, and like, I don't think we've seen this guy before. I don't think we've seen this kind of like billionaire, like that clearly picks his son over <laughs> over over making money. So I, I like that was very interesting to me that he picked his priorities. Uh, he ditches Harper's plan to go spend time with his son because his son has finally opened up to him. Um, I love the possibility that their relationship started at like her watching Jesse at a similar conference, like obviously really started mm. and it could possibly end at her like waiting to watch him and they're just an empty chair. He never comes up. That just, I like that kind of symmetry. Um, what do you think of that scene and kind of where their relationship ends at the end of this episode? It was, decision? it was kind of like heartbreaking to see her floundering. Um, mm-hmm in that last ditch effort to bloom. But yeah, I, I liked it. I like I like that you said, like you said, that he picked Leo in that instance. But I didn't really have much to say about that scene. I mean like Yeah, I mean I think I think that's I mean, that was the we're best. gonna see we're gonna see Jesse again, like for sure. Oh yeah so, definitely we'll definitely um which and then the, the that final scene, Yeah that scene does two ahead. things. It, it's one it shows us Jesse's Jesse picking Leo and also it kind of <laughs> Forces Harper's hand like he's like you have no other options, which yeah. sends her to Eric. I didn't know the episode. Um, okay, so <laughs> they they use some words in this episode that I'm not really sure I understand. And again, mm-hmm. this is why I'm, I'm I, it's weird because I, I hate subtitles, but like I'm, this is I'm like I really need the subtitles because I'm not really sure what you're about to say. <laughs> um, but just to it's weird because we never really talk about our notes before we record, which is obviously different podcasts have different different routines, but that's how mm. you get a situation like me thinking um, Maggie Lovey Cunt is... Maggie. Uh, Ma- Maggie Lovey Cunt. Um, Maggie. But 
is the impl- is the imp- or impression meant to be that like they are trying to leave together? Yes, yes. Because they would how we worth a bit away. Yeah. Why would Eric want to do this? Because what is she I worth to he, him? I think she, he still thinks she has bloom. That so was from okay, that, okay. From that, that was why. Yeah, from that uh, discussion that they had earlier in the episode, where he's saying that he's been talking to recruiters, or you know, he's no longer de- ignoring. And in the calls, and yeah. And then he tells her that institutions are shells for key client relationships. Mm-hmm. I at that point, my note is: Is Eric selling here? Is he trying to get her to leave with him? Uh, okay, okay. Because that's I, I don't know. It came. I, I mean, I mean, it might not have been, but I don't trust any of these guys anymore. <laughs> I, I think it was. I think it was. I think what you're saying makes sense. I think it was. Because so, I thought Eric was too forthcoming. I thought he was too forthcoming yeah, in that scene. So it yeah. makes sense. That, yeah, I agree with you. So that's that's what I thought was happening. I think he was trying to tell her, look, you know, I'm I'm basically done here. Let's mm-hmm. leave. And we can make more money because you have Bloom. But in that case, this conversation lasts five minutes. Yeah. Like... <laughs> Yeah, it's, yes. it's not really a cliffhanger then, because like it's like once she once he knows that she doesn't have bloom, it's over. That's the end of the conversation. I mean, this this not the first time that she's going to try and lie to get get her way. <laughs> true, <laughs> true, um, uh, true. Yeah, uh, I would say this. Like, like obviously, I've been we've been very good all season. This was the first time I, I really wanted to load up episode seven. You were like, this was the first time I really just wanted to load up episode seven. Just like, <laughs> let's go. Let me just watch episode seven right now because. Obviously, as well, I I got the impression that like it was like okay, are we both a bit away? Can we both go? And Eric is very open to the idea, and we had kind of theorized would it end up being Harper and, and Eric again versus DVD? Like, was that the story we we're going to tell? And maybe right, maybe maybe she tries to convince Bloom to come back, and then go with him and Eric. That's a possibility, I guess. Because my main yeah. thing was like. Why would like and I was thinking oh like it, it just happened she he wouldn't know he's so far up in whatever floor that he wouldn't know that he she, wouldn't know she doesn't yeah. have she doesn't have bloom anymore um I mean no one will know she doesn't have bloom apart from her and bloom true true there's no one that knows and even that is still a bit but wait doesn't it's still a bit up in the air so what does bloom do does bloom move to like dining like what is the real world like, how does this happen? Like, if he doesn't want to work with Harper, they just move to, like, Danny or someone. Because, like, he's still their client, right? With the whole Yeah, Riker but he would just, he probably just go through someone else at their Someone desk. else. Okay. Because um, he's not, he's not Harper's client. He's Pepper's yeah, client. Yeah, Pepper's client. Um, but if she had left, he But he, have, might just, he, he might just use them to, like, empty his position in Rikan. Okay. And, like never do business but if he again. if he left he could have left with her or rather if she left he could have she could have, he could have left with her like if she was exactly. going to goldman or something exactly. um we spent almost 40 minutes talking about this about Harper, and i think i don't know because, is anything like it was it was incredible it was oh great. yes it, it, was, was it was like i said this is like time was like she's carrying this episode like it's it's yeah. just her like speaking of again we talk about these performances um harry lotti has five minutes in which he's he's spectacular here <laughs> he's He's the, the, the facial expressions when he like when he, when he realizes that what she's doing or what Harper is doing, and you just see his face like he, um Saga is very good this episode. Um Alex who plays Daniel is very good, like very good performances, obviously, but like it's just all, is all resting. Yes, I ooh, let me not assume, but I think so from his last name, I, I believe he is. Yeah. Mm, I thought so. Uh, from his last name, I believe he is. Um Yeah. I th- <laughs> yeah, I I just I thought it was a great episode. I, I just was just really dumbfounded with how like Kayla Femi uses Mihala's face this type and how she just managed to hold everything in and just command this episode. There's a lot she's doing. There's a lot. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. I was just very, very impressed. Um yeah, we're gonna take a quick break. And when we come back, we're gonna just gonna talk about um the other characters. If you're on YouTube, there's gonna be no break. So hi, see you again. Um Okay, let's talk about let's talk about who should we go? Goss or let's let's go a bit levity. Let's do, or what do you want? Let's what do you want? Yasmin. Let's yeah, I was gonna say Yasmin. let's do Yasmin. Let's do Yasmin. Yeah. <laughs> this is gonna be this could be another 40 minutes if we're not careful. Um, <laughs> so there are two important Yasmin scenes I want to do. Yasmin and Celeste, Yasmin and Kenny. Um mm. if you have anything else, you can you can sprinkle it in, in there. Um Yasmin and Celeste finally have sex. Again, you guys watch the show, so I'm not I'm, I'm not gonna like go through the entire beat no, for beat. Give thing. us a beat by beat of their sex scene. A beat by beat. 
Oh, mm. I'm sorry. I apologize. Um, yeah, yeah, because it doesn't really work, does it? Because they were having girl on girl sex. So. I don't discriminate. No, of, your words sex. just don't make sense. All, all sex is beaten. I don't know. I'm sorry. Can we continue? <laughs> Or you could just do <laughs> why you could have left it there, you didn't have to, anyways. Um, yes, so, so I like pa- Bloom, you're not an ally. I oh, know it's not financial possible not to be an ally in this situation, so I'm, I am an ally. Um, God, what was I saying? Yes, I was just very intrigued by Marisa Bella's reactions in that post sex scene because for everything that Celeste said, it felt like. He has been had a different weird reaction. Like her reaction when she says, I guess it was the 70s, is like, I can't decipher that. I don't know what, what he has been thinking. <laughs> I'm not even going to try. Um, but I, obviously, the, I, I love the quotes that um, I think I wrote it down here. Um, what Celeste says, I know you're younger than me, but surely you're not naive enough to think I'm not just, I'm not just a little messy. I think is what she says. I didn't really, mm-hmm. I, I missed some words there. I think that's right. Yeah. Um, how did you, speaking of facial reactions, how did you interpret Yasmin's reaction when Celeste leaves the room? Actually say that it was a plan. Okay. Because I have disappointment here on my on, on my notes as well. Um, I have disappointment and I have confusion. Why was she disappointed? Oh, no. It's almost like the whole um, Robert thing with Nicole, isn't it? Like, you think you're special. But... Uh, like Yasmin, I guess in Yasmin's head, right? She mm. wasn't being like she was tempting this woman so much that she was cheating on her wife with her. Ah. Uh, okay. So okay. now that you that know that, sense. oh, we have an arrangement and you are not the first, you're probably not going to be the last. It just feels a bit more, you know, transactional. I feel like Yasmin should grab her W's as she can. Like she was, this woman clearly liked her enough to still do it. Like, mm. It's not just doing it with every woman on, on the street. Like, I think Yasmin should still just grab her W's everywhere she can. Like, Robert I mean, is I like, get... shit, is, she, is Nicole doing it to everybody? Is a bit different. Like, I, mean, I don't I'm, know. She might, be, she might have the same feelings. Though. Like, she might have the same, oh, like, is this just the thing that you do, right? Because mm-hmm. you guys are in an open marriage. Like, you might just have sex with anyone you want to. Like, this isn't, doesn't really mean anything to you. I don't know. That, that was True. how I interpreted that. Yeah, um, but yeah. yeah, maybe she so. so she she feels like she has a lot. She's a lot more emotionally invested than yeah. than um than Celeste. Than is. Celeste. Also, Which, the way Celeste like gets up and dresses up is just it was it's felt, very. It was practiced. Yeah. It it feels very and uh, what I was thinking was like um, not cold, but almost yeah. clinical and surgical. Just clinical. Like, yeah. This is. Uh, Charlie was like, okay, look. Last night I felt I was going to cross a line, so I went to report myself just so I got permission to cross the line today. It's like step by step, plan by plan, which I guess. Methodical. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess. You asked me again. I guess we keep forgetting. You know, we keep forgetting how young this guy is. This guy's are like 23, 24. Like she's probably Fair. rolled up in the room, the romance and the whatever of being with her. Yeah. Her boss. She and even mentions like, it. She even mentions it in the scene, right? She mentions that oh. I never thought oh, I, I never thought I'd get with a married person. Yeah, yeah. And and I, like, I, it's a big thing for her. Yeah, and I, and I, then to find out actually, that it isn't. Yeah, it goes back to the thing about how she, maybe she thinks she's like temp because like, obviously they speak French and they don't they don't put the the um, what do they call it the subtitles or the meaning. So I don't know, Haja, you you speak French. Tell me what they said. But I guess it's pressure of like she's like oh I didn't think I was going to be the temptress or the mistress or whatever. And then so let's like calm down. You're not like it's not you're not. <laughs> mm. it was, I had a discussion. You're not. Um, but yeah, I, I thought I found out again. What happens next is uh, it's in there, like what? How does this go? Does like is it a, is it for Celeste? Is it like a one time thing? We get that done and I, I can focus on work, or am I open to doing multiple times? What's her plan? Does Yasmin want to do multiple times now that she knows how? She knows. Yeah. Straightforward it is. Um, we'll see. And so, I think so, also there was a. I don't know if it was before or after. I think this might have been after. Sorry. When she goes back to her desk and she speaks to Venetia about Yeah, it's after. Robert. Yeah. It's after, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And <laughs> Venetia says, used and abused. And I think she has a physical reaction on her face mm-hmm. to Venetia saying that. I think she might be feeling like that. You know, there's something I, I was thinking about when I watched that, when I watched mm-hmm. the show, like this, this week after 
our exclusive and explosive interview with Conrad and Mickey last yep, week. Yep. So they say that they, you know, I think they got advice early on in the process to not be afraid to say exactly what's happening in the scene. Mm-hmm. And I think that might have been like Venetia using those words. I think that might be that. Fair. That to explain sense. exactly what, what Yasmin is feeling. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, Just, giving your mentor. Yeah. And I, I guess she also says the same line again, almost like we takes us to the conversation with Kenny, doesn't she? When she's like, mm. um, when Kenny says, you spend that much time with your boss, you become their partner or whatever. And she's like, well, mm-hmm. I don't cross that line. And she's like, exactly. I was speaking to future me or whatever. Promise to my future self. Exactly. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think <clears> she definitely does feel used by, by Celeste now that she knows. Now, I don't want to question her feelings and I don't spend too much time on this, but like, why? I don't know. Like it doesn't. Are you saying, I, it doesn't wait, so banky, banky. So in, are you just saying that for yourself, you wouldn't feel that? I don't because, know, you know why you she wanted does. to smash and then you smashed and then yeah, it's, you yeah, feeling bad? yeah. <laughs> yes, I don't understand. Like, I got. I don't see maybe the maybe at parts. the yeah yeah, but maybe maybe at the core of it is that Yasmin is still a very monog- monogamous person, right? Like, yeah. So she the the concept of having several partners where you are emotionally invested in all those partnerships might be a bit foreign. Okay, yeah, I mean, if it's a, if it's a monogamy it's polyamory discussion they're going to have, then I guess that's, that's obviously, yeah. That's yeah, that's, so that's, I, that's think, I think that was where she was coming coming at it from. Like, mm-hmm. we are now in a, as per, you and your wife is no longer a, is now us. But Celeste is saying, nah, you're yeah, just, you're one of my babes. <laughs> Get in line. And my wife has a, her own... Uh, no, yeah, I, I mean, I guess, like, I don't think it's the same. Like, I, I kind of understand, I, I don't know, again, I don't want to question her feelings or whatever, but I fully understand, like, Robert feeling bad, realizing Nicole's thingy, mm. but I don't really understand. I, I don't guess I don't get the same feeling with, with, with Yasmin, because I'm just like, everything you wanted and everything you thought was the case has happened, just and now you found out that, like, she had a different, like, she had an excuse or she had a way out. Like, it, maybe to me, maybe because to me, I feel like this is a better scenario. Like now, I'm not, I'm not. Tell men to stay out of women's business. Fair enough, which is fair, which is fair, which is fair. I think my thing is like, oh, I'm like now you're no longer a home wrecker. So like, why aren't you happy? But <laughs> she wanted to be a home she wrecker. To be a home wrecker. <laughs> I don't care. But you know what? You're right. As a man, I take myself out of out of women women's businesses. But let's talk about let's talk about, talk about women. Let's talk about Yasmin and Kenny. Um, mm. Yasmin is a woman, not Kenny. Um, I think this is the first time Kenny actually like earnestly apologizes. Yeah. This is the first time that the apology is not about him, right? It's not about mm-hmm. his recovery or his steps or whatever. It's like he and obviously it comes through through Conor McNeil's performances. Like exactly you actually feel like this is this is not an act. <laughs> Nobody if you're this good an actor, you shouldn't be at the bank. Like this is not so yeah, I just I thought it was an incredible scene. I thought it was like almost like Yasmin. I don't know if it was her being allergic to actually take the apology or just <laughs> trying to be the whole business of and like, oh it's fine, whatever it was, but like she was clearly pushing. Right, or rather mm. pulling while while Con, um, Kenny was pushing in terms of the apology. I, I really like that kind of push and pull. What do you think of that scene? I thought it was great. I thought, yeah. yeah, performances were great. Um, I think it's a nice bow on top of their, you know, their story. Maybe they'll cross paths in the future, but like, mm-hmm. if this is the last time that they speak, I think it's I think it's a well, you know, a well deserved end or a well rounded. It's also. End. It's also the only point of hope I can think of in this show because, like, it gives Bro. hope that that Kenny would be a better boss, like Venetia and people like that. Like exactly. he's led. Uh, I, there's no other hope in Pierre Point and Co. Uh, um, yeah. I, oh, I just saw. I have notes on the score. I was meant to come in here. I just have like the Jimmy excess needle drop at the end. It's just incredible. Um, oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> just, it was ridiculous. Very, very. Good. It was ridiculous. Very, very, very good. Um. Should we talk about Gus? You know, I was obsessed with that song. I was obsessed with that song. Re- really? I was in Abuja. So did you like, how, what was your physical I, reaction? I, when, I lost, when, I lost when it. Did... <laughs> my hair was in my head like this. <laughs> oh, you had you had the reaction I had earlier in the episode. My hand was actually on my head at the end of the episode when when everything was fucking up and I was playing that music. I was like, fuck, man. Uh, um, what a great episode of TV. Then, yeah, 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 let's get to Gus. Let's, let's talk about Gus quickly before we run out of time. Um... I have it here that Gus's thing feels like a completely different show. <laughs> because it feels like it's... a completely separate show. So I feel like, 
I feel like it might come together because they obviously um they threw some they springs because obviously yeah yeah and they, as fast day they mentioned that his boss got the his new boss, job yeah. and everything so it might come together in the last two episodes but it does feel like i mean fact that he's not on peer point like it does feel like a different show which is like is a good thing that they all live together um i think my first note here is that he dyed his hair black and removed the earrings because his parents are still african like, <laughs> he, was like, he, was like sure. he can't he can't go to a confirmation i love i love that note i love that he can't go to a confirmation with his earrings and his blue hair <laughs> like your parents are i want to say they, they tolerate you in other parts of your life there's a there's a limit um he said what does that mean what does that mean it's like, like, you, she was like you so know you what know. it means like what do you, you know exactly like what do you want from me like, why, are we, <laughs> why are we don't beat around the bush um, bro so I have I have this note. I was like, was this a similar more and like, this being the conversation he has with his sister in the the chapel for the confirmation? Mm-hmm. Was this a more elongated version of his dressing down of Leo in episode three, which is essentially yeah. uh, what does it say that you should have if no but if you're not going to live up to I don't can't remember what he says. I, I should have written down what he says to Leo, but like it's a bit pathetic if you it's pathetic punch down right something like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly, and. Is that what, like, his sister is like, look, what are you going to do? Are you just going to live on XK a year? Like, you can't provide for your kids on that amount of money. And I, I think it's mm-hmm. almost the same thing. It's like, you kind of, like, yeah, you might be feeling fulfilled, which obviously, as people who like Gus as a character, we want him to do a good thing. But she's like, you're living in a real world where that fulfillment is not going to pay. You can't do social yeah. work, which is essentially what it's, it's that amount to. Um, what do you think of Gus? Are you sad that Gus is probably going to go searching for the bigger money and leave? the work that is fulfilling and is helping people or are you just like, yeah, that's the world he lives in? No, no. I think I felt really bad for the, you know, that guy that he's always talking to. Mm-hmm. That's his white friend in his office place. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know what to call him. Like his constituent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I felt yeah. bad for him at the end, but then I don't know. I feel like Gus is such a hopeful character. Um, I think whatever he does next, and I'm not sure if he's made that decision, to be fair. I'm not sure if he's decided that he's not going to, you know, pursue this in a way that can um, <clears throat> satisfy, you know, his you know, need for fulfillment or validation and his parents' wants for him. I think he this might find taking a way the promotion, to you don't too. think? I think he might. I think he might just end up just taking the promotion, but then do yeah. I think that's what he's gonna do with it. Yeah, mm-hmm. but we'll see. Though I don't know. I just I love the story. I thought it was such a well told story yeah. of there's the I love the use of his, angle, I lo- there's the yeah. black angle. Yeah, there's even the junior doctor. I guess she's a junior doctor. Um, his yeah. sister, because she talks about making consultants. So I guess she's still a bit mm. junior. And I just, yeah, I love, I love these of his sister. I love the, and it's just like, look, you, <laughs> your parents, like, they already know that you're not working at Pierpoint. They know you've left. <laughs> like, you might think they don't know, but like, they know you've left. And in, you, what, you told, what they call it, Auntie Mama, which I'm assuming. Auntie Mama. <laughs> I'm going to assume that's like, maybe. Is it great? Grandmother's sister. Like what did you say? Maybe, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was kind of thinking. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, grandmother's sister. And then, like, you told her you're writing a book, like, She's not stupid. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I just like, I like that. I, I like the fact that his sister is like, okay, first time she's have a lot like, yeah, yeah. It? And then like, look, okay, let's be, let's be realistic here. Let, we have to do brass tacks. Like you can't do this. You can't, I'm stressing out at work because I need to provide for my, with my children. Like, what do you think is going to happen? Like we've already kind of given our parents, for lack of a better term, a couple of disappointments already, right? And they, they've kind of made peace with the fact that you said you're gay and, like, that's fine, as fine as it's ever going to be with them. And you've left Pierpoint, okay, but now you can't just leave Pierpoint after 18 months and be a social worker. Like, there's, there's only so much they can do. And, it, I mean, when you see them at Eton, like, this is what they've done for you, Eton, Oxford. Like, mm. Come on, you kind of have to, you have to do your, do your part. So, Yeah. That's a big gap though, because that's his brother is like what sixteen. Yeah, and that's his... something I was going to ask. Is that his brother or is that like his nephew? Oh no, I'm pretty sure that's his brother. But it says his, his, brother, his nephew right? are like what, what um, just yeah. walking now. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's all. And then she would have been with him, not the parent. I think I think that's his brother. 
Oh yeah, uh, fair. Okay, cool. So unless his brother is sixteen and she's like maybe twenty eight, thirty. Oh yeah, do you know I for, I again I forgot their ages. Yes, he's yeah. quite young. So yeah, because Gus is like twenty four. He's probably like 23, 24, yeah. 22, 24, yeah. And then she's probably like 28, 30, maybe. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I've, again, I'm excited for the last three episodes. I, again, I just think this is a great season of TV that I'll watch. I think like, these last four or five episodes have just been like, yeah, like some of the best we've seen on TV this year. So um, do you have any, before we run out, do you have any quotes or overhead stuff? Nothing with my head, but I think my favorite line from the episode was, don't worry, you know I'm an ally. <laughs> oh. I think I think that, I think his, Jesse's whole demeanor in that interaction was ridiculous to me. I loved every second of it. Yeah. Because yeah. he's just like, I know you're fucking like, okay, let me, like, let me this see my This is what happened. It's like a fucking... I don't care. <laughs> um, oh, I have a few. I have I'm a few. you to give, give my like... son. I have a few lines. I think... This is not even like that funny, but I was just like, when he, when the guy on the phone is like, is he a hard guy? Tell him to hold on to it. I was just like, okay, I just like that. <laughs> then um, Reddit school shooters, incredible, incredible line. Um, then, oh, actually, that reminds me. You and I are both, we watch a lot of TV shows, like mm-hmm. an unhealthy amount of TV shows. We've done for a few years. Do you know where Kenny's dance is from? Bro, I had no idea. It was so <laughs> weird. It was so weird. I was like, you should watch more TV. I was like, it's like British TV that like came out in like the eighties. Like, I, I, should I know what this is from? <laughs> I had no clue. Uh, but yeah, Vinicius re- replied to that is like, is that like a sober thing? I was like, this is- <laughs> <laughs> oh Vinicius my god! Saying, you silly bitch killed me. <laughs> that was funny. That was funny. Okay. Um, the next two uh Rishi, because you know you have to have Rishi. It's trying to yeah, like yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, how have they pulled themselves away from stepsister porn long <laughs> enough to buy this stock? Insane. An insane oh my god! Rishi. Oh my god! And then he goes, "I'm going to concede. I have to active his sex life to be a redditor, but I respect <laughs> them." And I was like, "You know what, Rishi? Hold on, hold on, Rishi." Um, yeah, I mean, look, another great episode, another great, just great performances from Mihala, Harry, uh, Marisa, David, just Alex, Saga, everyone, everyone, well done, Caleb, Premier on the second of his two episodes. We didn't really speak much about them last week because obviously, um, we had the interview, but yeah, I just, we didn't, we didn't get much of an update on, on, um, Robert's sobriety, but we'll see, I guess we'll find out more about that in, in the coming weeks. But yeah, yo, do you have any parting words before we wrap up this episode? Nah, bro. Industry season two, six for six. Let's see. I think this is good. This is gonna go down, you know. Like this Let's is gonna see. go down as one of those seasons. Like, uh, like um, Empire season one. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Better, <laughs> Luke. Let's calm down. Let's better than Empire season one. Bro, what do you mean better? Than Empire, Empire season, season one was very no. Empire season one was. I'm not even. I'm not trying to take the Empire season, season one. one was... of Empire is unprecedented and on like it's not been repeated. Okay, okay. In but... history, <laughs> no, Baki. I hope you know that. I hope you know that in the it. history. Oh no, I think no, it's a in very the good history team. of television. What they did in Empire season one has never been done before and has not been done since. Was it, it doesn't make sense. Season? No, was it I think like it was like less... ten. It was like oh, okay. between eight and ten. Maybe 13, maybe but like 13. to have rising ratings every episode. Oh no, no, it was a phenomenon. That, nobody's arguing with that. Nobody's arguing with that. Unheard of. Was that the last? No, this is us. I was gonna say was that the last like network TV hit? But well, probably this is us. Yeah, it's probably this is us. Probably this is us. Have you watched This Is Us? Never, not once. Yeah, not once. Have you? No, but I guess, <laughs> I guess this is us. Thanks for coming, guys. Thanks for listening. Um, guys, yeah, I had a whole outro, but you know what, guys, see us. Do see you, like, do your outro, do your outro. <laughs> it was like, no, it was, I can't even do it. It's gonna be, I was gonna reference the episode, I was gonna say something like, no, actually, no, I'm not even gonna do it. Um, guys, thank you very much for listening, <laughs> and join us next week when we'll be joined by Daniel Collier. Bye, guys. That was us. Ugh.